What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Now it was an event that shocked a lot of people. In May of 1987, Tom Petty and his then wife were having breakfast at their home in Encino, California with their five-year-old daughter when they suddenly smelled smoke. And within a few minutes, Petty's home would be engulfed in flames. Now lucky for Petty, his wife and daughter would escape unharmed while his housekeeper would sustain minor injuries when her hair caught on fire. Now most of the home would be destroyed with the exception of Petty's recording studio in his basement, which escaped unharmed. Now it was estimated that the fire resulted in about $1 million worth of damage. It would be Annie Lennox who offered help bringing clothes to the family, as her Eurythmics partner Dave Stewart just happened to be Petty's neighbor. And lucky for Petty, he had a tour scheduled around this time with the Heartbreakers, touring with Bob Dylan, and since he had no place to stay for himself and his family, he just took the whole clan with him out on the road. Now what was most shocking is that investigators determined that the fire was not an accident at all. The investigators had determined it was arson. Now according to a report, an arsonist had taken their time to soak the back stairs of Petty's house in lighter fluid, and Petty and his family were shaken up by the fact that somebody had tried to take their lives. Now Petty would bring up the incident in an interview with author Paul Zolo for the 2005 book Conversations with Tom Petty saying, we were shaken for years by it, it's sort of like being raped I would imagine. It really took a long time and it was 10 times as bad because you knew that somebody just went and did it. Somebody tried to off you. Now Petty would also reveal that due to the incident he would have trouble using the word fire in his songs, but the incident would inspire Petty to write one of his best known songs which was Won't Back Down on his 1989 record Full Moon Fever. The lyrics would be inspired by his attitude towards the attacker. Now Petty's defined attitude didn't extend to just his music, but what he did with his house. Instead of moving to another property, Petty rebuilt a new home that was almost 12,000 square feet on the exact same piece of land, but kept the basement studio that was untouched in the fire. Petty's ex-wife Jane Benio was given the home as part of his divorce settlement in 1996, and she tried to sell the home in 2013 but was unsuccessful. Apparently she owed more on the home than it was listed for, and it was promptly taken off the market. Now the house was then rented out to a professional party person who held wild and fairly regular illegal parties with some guests having to pay a cover charge to enter the premises. Now one of the realtors who listed the property years later would claim, we're not quite sure what went on in those parties, but we did find photos of pole dancers in the drawers in various rooms with names like Tiffany and Cartier. Now the history of the property only got worse from there. When the bank representatives went to evict the tenant, the guy wouldn't allow anyone in, not even the sheriff. He posted a sign on the gate threatening violence and stated that trespassers would be prosecuted and subject to military law. The police then had no choice but to storm the property with a SWAT team as well as helicopters and black vans. The tenant was then arrested and hauled off to jail. Now as recently as 2018, it was reported that the home finally traded hands with pop star Selena Gomez reportedly paying $5 million for the house. So was the arsonist ever caught? Well years later Tom Petty hinted he may have known who was behind the attack, but he couldn't prove it. Now no one would ever be arrested by the police for the attack. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the story in the comment section below along with any suggestions for future stories you'd like to see me cover. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Take care.